My name is Audie Ratliff, and you are watching the 36th episode of the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary series, in which I try to inform you and keep you up to date on everything that hap has happened here at Ratliff Mandolin's across the course of the week. As many of you already know, we are sort of in between batches of mandolins right now, working on some repair work. Our number one job this week is going to be that A-style mandolin that we had to replace the neck in. It's already put in and all the binding is done and the pearl inlay has been done. And uh, now all we need to do is get it all finished prepped and everything, get it stained and get some clear cuts put on it. That's job number one this week. But job number two is this Gibson guitar here. I still need to figure out some issues that need to be taken care of. And one of those is I need to re-glue these braces in this back that we have taken off of the guitar. And the braces are already unglued, all of them, except for just about an inch and a half right here up the center strip. And so I have devised this method. I've taken some t-shirt material and cut it into the proper shapes and draped them over this bad joint. And I have a little tray of water and an eyedropper. And I'm going to just dip water onto the t-shirt and let that soak in, hopefully, and loosen that joint so those things can be taken apart so that I can put them back together. So that's the plan. Let's see if it works. Well, now that worked exceptionally well. After soaking these things with rags for the whole day yesterday, I come, I used a little pallet knife under there, and these braces popped right off. And as a bonus, these very delicate pieces of mahogany that come from the head block and the tail block, which I thought would surely be lost, they just eased right on off there, and I think I can slip those back down into the guitar. Instead of having to rebuild this, I think I'll just be able to re-glue it. And uh, this piece of, very delicate piece of, perfing come off from right there and I've got three or four places here on the back that I think today I'm going to soak those and see if I can save that kerfing as well. Now while I have indeed spent some time with a Gibson guitar this week the bulk of my time has been spent with this little A style mandolin that we are putting the neck in and it is pretty much finished and ready to shoot the finish on it. Right now I'm going to tape up the back and the top and I'm going to leave the rest of it exposed. We're going to uh, match the color as best we can here and then clean off the binding and everything. I'm going to try to age the binding with a little bit of yellow stain and then uh, let's see the only other thing that I should mention is that I'm not going to tape up the sides I'm going to leave those exposed and at some point during the clear coating process I'm just going to pull a couple of clear coats all the way around so that uh, when the time comes to polish it out we won't have any of those nasty little feather lines where you lay one coat of lacquer a new coat on top of an old coat and they don't melt together and then when you polish them out you have a little feather line right there so I'm just going to go ahead and lay a uh, new coat all the way around and uh, that way then in this area between the new neck and the old finish we're just going to have a smooth seamless polish job so that's going to take up the rest of my day uh, it's going to be taping this thing up and shooting the finish on and everything and trying to get the first coats of clear coat on this repair job. We are all taped up and as you can see we have applied the stain and the first clear coat to tack the stain on and uh, although maybe not exactly the same we got pretty close as you can see to the original color. 
Now that we have the stain on the neck and the binding is all scraped clean, there is one more issue that needs to be taken care of before we can shoot all our clear coats, and that is the fact that the old binding, which is a very bright white, the lacquer over top of that has yellowed over the years, and our new construction has the shock bright white binding. So I have made up a concoction of stain, uh, some yellow, some brown, and believe it or not, a couple of drops of orange that reasonably approximates the color uh, of the old yellowed lacquer. And so I'm going to take a paintbrush and just ease over top of that until we kind of get things so, uh, so it doesn't jump right out at you. And then we'll be able to uh, apply the clear coats. It is Friday and the work week is rapidly coming to an end. Let me give you a situation report on where we're at with this A-style repair. I've shot all the bill coats on it. I just got through doing a 220 grit level sanding and shot yet another coat on it. And that's where we stand. We'll start uh, in on it Monday morning with even a finer grit sandpaper and uh, maybe another coat of slick on top of it. So that's where we're at with that. And let's go and take a look at that older Gibson guitar that we're working on. Ah, the Gibson guitar. We are putting back all of the little pieces that were broken or damaged during the removal of the back process and have gotten most of them taken care of. You can see the last few little snips and stuff have been glued and then we've used tape as a clamp to glue those on and soon it will be uh, hopefully time to start sanding it and getting it ready to put the back back on. Now speaking of the back, the back itself is not anywhere near ready to be put back on. First thing we have to address is it's got several cracks in it. This one here is probably eight or nine inches long. This crack here is a good one. Got a good one here, a good one here, uh, maybe one or two up here. Now I am going to glue those cracks and cleat them with little diamond shaped pieces of wood, very much like what you see in a violin or fiddle repair. Now we have this contraption. Guitar builders out there will know exactly what this is. This is a dished bowl that's at the same radius as the back radius on a D model guitar. And it happens to work out very, very close to the brace radius on this Gibson guitar. So we're going to use this as a backer and a uh, uh, jig holder and everything else for this repair. And I will explain this thing to you for those who do not know what this is and how it's made and what it does. It is, a, like I said, a big dish. It is a round three quarter inch piece of plywood and then glued onto the top of this round piece of plywood is several radial pieces in here that are shaped with just the exact amount of curve in them and then on top of all of that mess is glued a quarter inch piece of masonite pushed down into that recess so the end result is a nice smooth I don't know if you can see it here but it's got no matter which way you spin it it's all got the same amount of radius in there so that you can take the guitar in the mold lay it down here scoot it back and forth and sand that radius in there now we don't need that and this back is finished so we don't want to lay it on sandpaper and so I have actually just cut a piece of cardboard here and we're going to take cling film saran wrap and wrap around there and the reason for that is so that when we put glue in this crack we're going to lay it down here and take it in to the big room to the prop bar deck 
Uh, some of you folks will know it as a go bar deck. We're going to fill the cracks with glue. Then we're going to glue these cleats on. And any glue that squeezes through on the other side will be against the cling film instead of the cardboard. And so it'll just peel right off and we'll be good to go. So having said all that, I'm going to probably run a little bit of footage of me doing that to end this video. Thank you so very much for watching and be sure to check back with us each and every week as we have another episode to the Ratliff Mandolin's weekly production diary series and we hope to see you then.